Hello, everyone. Good to see everyone. Um, so this is something I've done periodically, generally at the beginning of the session and a couple times during the session to kind of get an update. Um, so some of you have been around and may recall it's uh, kind of late uh, last year, which is the odd year. I sent out a solicitation to the department of treatment heads, elders, everyone to kind of get all their ideas. And this is um, a compilation of all those different ideas. Obviously, you know, the ones that we've achieved have come off and some of the ones have uh, gone on. I do apologize because I know that you just got this. Um, so what I could do is just kind of run through some of the ones on here that are Can you? kind of more interesting. Yeah. Yep. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, so there's the two transit ones kind of midway down the page. So there obviously could be some um, things going on. There's the statewide transit capital assistance fund. So with the VW cell, yes. um, the state put some of that money toward its own fleet and then had this program where um, they basically made no interest loans to municipalities. Um, and it comes out of uh, our shared revenue payments. Unfortunately, it was a little bit um, skewed is a delicate term, so Madison and Milwaukee have to repay, I think it's like 75%, uh -huh. and everyone else smaller has to pay, repay something on a sliding scale starting more like 25 down to 10. So it's not a K, it's an R. What, what is that? For skewed. Yes. Right. <laughs> 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 Edit. Um, so I know, that, so one thing that would be nice, and I don't know how, um, feasible that would be is to have that percentage adjusted. Mm -hmm. uh, barring that, it would, it would be nice also to have that money kind of go back into a revolving um, yeah. fund, because mm -hmm. as it is now, I mean, I think in a way they're just kind of laundering the VW money, and yeah. then it goes back to the state, and it's really not continuing to go toward um, the purposes of the, of the settlement. So have you talked to anyone in the Evers administration about it? Um, not yet. I know others have. I know the transit group um, has brought this up, and I know mg &E has brought it up as well when they've talked to them about it. Um, so those are kind of two things that are out there. Um, and the transit thing, obviously RTA is the other one. Um, and I mean, you know as well as I, there's, it's divided government and no one knows exactly yeah. what's going to happen. Um, so those two are, as I said, RTA has been there before, but I bring it up just because it's possible we'll see some. Mm -hmm. Do you think there'll be some traction under the new administration with the RTA? Um, I think there'd be some interest. Um, I mean, as everyone seems to know, the speaker is it's kind of a personal thing. I mean, he's very, very much opposed to RTAs. Um, there's always a lot of frustrating back and forth, especially in the state budget, and it's, I mean, it's possible something to come in there. I just don't know. I mean, I think it will definitely get some more traction and more discussion, but where it goes, I think it'll be at this point. Um, if you flip over to the next page, there's a couple things on transportation. Um, there's the ability to condemn for sidewalks and bike lanes. Mm -hmm. I just pointed out because it's new. If you don't remember, that was from last session. Mm -hmm. Probably uh, the legislature acted a little more broadly than they intended. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. It's in the state law now. Um, it's definitely something that's on the league's agenda uh, because it's just a very challenging, as you can imagine, to try and plan a bike path, this long linear thing, when you can't count on getting that land down the road. Is, is the dark store loophole is getting national press. Yes. New York Times ran a story about Wauwatosa yes. this time, and um, and just in other other publications. Do you think that has any possibility of breaking through? I do, and I apologize because that's right up there at the top, and I said I should have covered that. I do think that there is this, the study committee they're doing right now, um, and that's really not a tackling issue head on. It's kind of veered off to the side, as sometimes these committees do, especially in an area with like this where it's, there's not a lot of gray area to kind of massage. It's, like, it's either going to go one way or the other. Um, I know the league is um, going to push really hard for it again. They've actually asked communities to pitch in some additional money um, for you know marketing and, and marketing is probably the wrong word, but, but specifically for this 
public education on this, <laughs> which they have done. We did contribute a small amount. I think a lot of the smaller communities have actually contributed more, I think in part because it has such a tremendous impact on a smaller community. You have a Walgreens or a, or a big big home, minorities, whatever it is, that are dropping a huge percentage of their base. Um, so I know the league is going to push very, very, very hard on that, and they're going to continue. Uh, from what I heard from Jerry, the director of the league, they certainly fielded a lot of calls last session from legislators saying, you know, geez, would you please call my mayor and, and tell him I'm really with you, I'm on your side. They really did feel the heat, the league really did. I gotta tip my hat to them, they did a really good job um, making this issue front and center and putting a lot of pressure on them. But nothing ever. Can get across get the finish yeah, line. Right, well, did, did it get through the committee? It did get to a committee. But was it ever taken up? It was not taken up yeah. on the floor. And there was some, you know, as the session came to an end, there was some kind of late night um, jacket back and forth, um, mm -hmm. which without getting the details, it yeah. just didn't, didn't yeah. get there. Um, but I think I think that's one where legitimately we're um, municipalities and, and local governments and ultimately taxpayers actually do a good shot at, at, at achieving that. It'll be a tough road, but I think um, they're committed and that we're going to hear a lot about it mm. continuing for the next couple of years. Yes. <laughs> um, so going back to that, uh, the transportation one, the other issue to uh, flag is electronic bikes, dockless bikes, scooters, all mm. that. There's a, there's a word for it. I don't know what it is. Micromobility or something like that. All these kind of unusual new forms of transportation. Um, scooters, you may see in the news, they're, they're illegal, illegal by state law. There obviously will be an effort by Bird and Razor and all those others to, to make them legal. Um, and the question will be kind of how much room municipalities will be left uh, regulated in that area. And the same with electric bikes. So those two will come up. From what I've seen, a kind of initial draft top seems relatively um, Good. Like I don't, I, I don't get the sense that there's a real effort to preempt our use of the right of way and how they're parked um, and how the use are right of way. And so, am I correct? I thought last year I was getting an email regarding that electric bikes cannot be on the bike path. So, is this going to correct some of that, or is that something that we need to correct? This will correct some of that. Okay. And they don't want to definitively, Mike is here now, so I can defer him. Whether they're definitively not allowed on the bike path, my, the my memory was there was a little gray area, but we really shouldn't have them on the bike path. Um, and there's an, it's pushed by track and the whole kind of industry as a whole, because electronic bikes are just going by leaps and bounds. They want to make sure that they are legal. Um, so then the question we have obviously is can we as a city prohibit or limit or regulate them on our bike paths and on our sidewalks? Still maintain that control over that, mm -hmm. and I think that's largely what the legislation goal is allowing us to maintain that continuing authority. Uh, if we jump down a couple more, there's the fair dealership law. You all are probably familiar with that. That's um, at least the golf pros case. Mm -hmm. um, it's one of the leaks. One of the leaks. Few. I shouldn't say few, but one of their top issues, they, we did, they did get a Republican sponsor last session. I think we kind of ran out of time to get that through. Um, you know, because we've, we've fallen on the grenade for everyone. We can be the poster child for it, but it will have some benefit down the road if we can get that law changed um, in the future. Uh, to go back up to the uh, impact fee statutes, is there action to really preempt us? There, not that I know of. That was that's been on there for a couple yeah. sessions, and it was there was a there was a lot of back and forth. Um, this last session in the spring, when the what I call the developer bill mm -hmm. came through, and there was a, there was um, a lot of talk about it. Then. Talk about it then. I think what we ultimately came up with is a pretty good um, compromise. Um, there was a lot of unhappiness driven by our the way our impact fee changes went through um, and the developers really pushed for a lot of very, very strict limitations. I think how we, um, the bill that ultimately came out of it, I think that we largely can live with. Um, a lot of it tracked actually some of our current policies and was far less draconian than what they initially proposed. 
But given the history we've seen in the past six years, I mean, we do tend to see every session a, a landlord tent bill and a developer bill or two, you know, depending on the session. And that's certainly an area I could see coming back. But given that we just did it a few months ago, I'm, yeah. nothing would surprise me. But we did do it yeah. a few months ago. So, yeah. you know, that's not the highest on my list. Okay. What, what do you think um, out of this or other Democratic and or really major Evers initiatives, what um, might survive at work as? What do you think? Has a good chance. Question. I don't know. <laughs> I really have no idea. I know I have some stuff on at the end about um, uh, like Wisconsin Cheers and yeah. childcare. I know that's something, obviously, you know, professionally, personally, it's, it's important to the governor. I, I've talked a lot about it on the campaign. It would be nice to see um, some of those things. But the, the refundable tax credit? Yes. Really? I don't know if that'll come through, but I just know, you know, obviously education is a priority Why would you for get the government. A tax credit to poor people? Like, well, that's a question, question of two years and, well, like, you know, <laughs> where things come out of the wash and it come from, I don't, we don't know. But I, I do think those are areas he'll yeah. obviously um, want to push on. Um, and who's, who, who, why does this, Transport by non-police personnel. What is it? Who's opposed to that? Is it WPPA? I don't know if there is anyone proposed to it. My understanding, and, and with a grain of salt, because I have researched oh. it entirely, is um, it's just the way the statutes are drafted now. It's kind of ambiguous, um, and the way our so has this been floated before? Has this been is new. Oh, this is new, new for oh. this year. Oh. Yeah, because I think the Mendota change was well. It was, years it was ago. a few years ago now, yeah. actually. Um, and I don't know the details of kind of who does that, but I know that's there's yeah. some interest in looking into it at this point. Um, and I think they, the MPD and the attorney's office, from what I've heard, feels like yeah, we don't really are on firm enough ground that we feel, we feel comfortable moving forward looking into the kind of options and possibilities in, in having someone else, a third party, do it. Oh, not comfortable in doing it. Given the way that the current state statutes are drafted. They feel like they would want some additional oh. clarity that we could actually that this would actually be legal. Okay. The only other one I'll just highlight is there's a one on, on um, chloride reduction. Yes. That's something I've been looking into. So you, if you may, may all know we've done this salt wise certification, which is great, but it's all just kind of the city doing this as something good to do. Um, and I think it's been very successful. I think one, one large driver for salt applicators is, yeah, I would love to do all this, but um, I might get sued. And, it's, and, and I want my customers to feel like they're safe. So it's just a lot easier for me to dump twice the amount of salt and, and you get that nice, great feeling under your feet and everyone's happier. Um, and so a number of different states have looked into kind of the situation where if you um, go through the training and you get certified, then you have some, um, and you can show that you have followed the procedures in the training, you have certain records that you have some immunity from people who fall. Oh. So it kind of, it mm -hmm. takes that um, incentive out of the... Yeah. And this is for, for private, not public. Correct. This is all private applicators, right? Mm -hmm. We can do whatever we want, but at the end of the day, there's very little we can do to control application on private property. So that's the kind of rough outline. Mm -hmm. They do it in New Hampshire. They considered it in Minnesota last session. It didn't quite make it. They made it through one house and not the other. Um, there are a couple other states looking at some a similar thing. Um, so that's the rough outline of what. Well, when it comes up, it comes to a committee here. We should have Katie Crawley come okay. to because she complained at East Town and West Town about too much salt. She went to see the manager of West Town and got an excessive work. amount of salt. Uh -huh. <laughs> and he said, nobody gets sued for too much salt. Right. That's what it yeah. comes down to. Yeah. That's right. So That's she right. tried to do good. Work, the brining works, and as a, maybe this is a disclosure, as a professional snow removal, <laughs> A uh, person in the city who has done the SaltWise program and has taken advantage of the, um, well, my husband did, of the grants for brining. 
uh, equipment that I think if there is more of a focus on the brining the pre-treatment of surfaces before so the snow doesn't even stick mm -hmm. to begin with which you have to have certain conditions for that to work um, that really can well that will reduce the amount of salt even for people who put way too much salt down mm -hmm. uh, if they if they use that which the city is supporting um, even if they do tend to use too much salt you can get a clean surface without any salt if you pre-brine which uses like a quarter of the amount of salt mm -hmm. and i think that's what the salt waste folks would say right. is you know right anyone can jump in their pickup truck and throw a bunch of salt somewhere but you just go through this training and you actually right. it's more cost effective and it's more effective yes mm -hmm. actually well. effective, yeah. nick what is the chances that the juvenile's age will be raised that's a good question. It's, this, is, has a, this is important. Yes. And I know it has some support on both the left and the right as it, it giant criminal justice reform. I think uh -huh. one of the big um, stumbling blocks is cost. My, that's my understanding. That's, that's one of the larger stumbling blocks in it. Increases cost. Juvenile detention. Changing it from 17 back up. Right. To and the additional cost is more right. juveniles in detention. Right. But there was a bill on it, I think, last session sponsored by a Republican. So there is some kind of recognition on both sides of the aisle that that's an important issue. Whether we get there or not, it, you know, it's tough to right. say, but I would say it's interesting it's a bipartisan issue. And when over here where it's had, wait, where did I see it? Um, <coughs> The metro drivers, I saw it somewhere on here. Yeah, <laughs> don't they have that already? So why is it on? They, we can take that off. So that was a bill that we pursued session before last session before okay. um, we required that. Um, got through the assembly, got through a side hearing, and then the session ended. Um, and then since then, Metro has been able to negotiate with the union, and we now just started implementing that now. Okay. So that, you know, arguably that's just the vestige of a previous. So it's not statewide, it's just here in Madison? It's just here in Madison. chance of some of these things being packaged together in a criminal justice reform bigger bill because that seems to be some of what's going on in Congress and I thought the groups like Moses have been working on stuff like that. I don't know if, I don't know if there's any chance to get some bipartisan buy-in on some of these measures. I think that's right and I think that there is a good possibility of that. There was some of that at the end of the session. Representative Goyke from Milwaukee um, worked for really hard man. He's a former public defender, right. and and even and Governor Walker even explicitly gave him credit in the State of the Union or something like that. As you know, which is kind of noteworthy considering the yeah. partisan divide. So I think that is a possibility that there could be another package of, of um, reforms to come through. Um, that 17. I mean, it's been a while since I put the 17 year old thing, but the, I know the price tag is quite high. Um, but some of the other stuff. Well, another one I heard might be put in there was uh, making first-time OWI a criminal offense. Yes. Right. But that also has a huge cost, so there has to be some kind of trade-off. Yes. It's been done, Hop and Darling have done it every year for as long as I can remember. And they put it out, I don't think they ever do a damn thing to really get it enacted. They certainly don't buzz their own leaders about it, um, and then it's, that's it, you know, and it's just sort of a press release. And I think it's already out for this session by Darling, so yeah. for whatever. Yeah, it all the time. Nothing ever happens with that. I mean, maybe with Evers in favor, I don't think we've ever had a governor who supported mm -hmm. it. Doyle is not a big supporter of it. Mm -hmm. um, so, maybe that. Any other questions for Nick? Oh, so then I'll just add, I'll just, I mean, generally I'll continue the 
practice open, I've been doing in the past, and you get a lot of emails, so I try and be relatively judicious as I send mm -hmm. updates and try and send things that are kind of Madison specific as opposed to kind of generally. Um, but always feel free to contact me if you got questions about something that's come up. I'm happy to answer those, or if something I send to you, you want to ask more about it, or you know, I'm always available. So, or if you're not getting enough communication, let me know that too, or if it's too much, either way. Well, I think it's good to have you come to the city so we can have a discussion, but we'll let you know. Yes. I have one question. Do, do we know yet who the new uh, secretary is for DOA? Mm -hmm. Yes, and I'm forgetting his name. But it's somebody that will respond to emails? That I can't say. I heard ah. very good reviews from him, both. Uh, uh, I just that's another agency that really asked from, from Milwaukee, um, like, Discovery World, I think, is yeah, where he's yeah, most recently. Yeah. <coughs> um, he worked for Barrett and... Yes, yeah. that's right. He's political. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but he's yeah. confirmed. Right. <laughs> it's funny, so, the so. only troubled person in trouble is Craig Thompson, who's a Republican, instead, you know, and he was. So. Right. A Republican operative for years, mm -hmm. and now the Republicans want to kill him. Escape while you can, Nick. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Thank you so much. Okay. Thanks.